and <laughs> anyway, um, our final team for this afternoon is Team IGEDU, and here they are to present their project. Team IGEDU, everyone. <laughs> afternoon and, and I know we're taking a little more of your time before dinner but uh, we thought well since we kind of did a trailer before we'll do another one <laughs> I'm a proud member of team IGEDU or team IGEDU whichever you want to call us and my teammates are Anna Yakel who's currently the business and address librarians for Indian Trust Public Library District, where she works with non-native language learners, GED students, and their families, both at the branch library and in the larger library community. Caitlin Bergen, who has worked for a year, who worked for a year as an adjunct at Harper College Library, but will be starting full-time at McKinley Public Library as a school liaison. She comes from a background of school librarianship, having previously worked at a school serving underprivileged students in Des Plaines, Illinois, and she has experience working with ELL students and the Common Core Standards. Good things to have, right? As well as with integrating technology with learning. And uh, Annette Alvarado, Annette is a librarian and instructor serving adult non native language learners and their families at the Harper College Community Library Reading Room and an adult and teen reference librarian at North Lake Public Library District. Who is complaining about children librarians not getting paid enough? <laughs> How about trying to do it all? <laughs> As a bilingual librarian, she works directly with members of a diverse community including Spanish-speaking children and parents, and has special interest in specialized library services to non-native speakers. And um, Katrin Doskta, <laughs> and you can take this whichever way you like. She's either responsible for us or she's either to blame for us. <laughs> <laughs> Who actually sort of put our team together after we Turn it down a few times, all of us, but she threatened us, so she got us together. <laughs> Catherine offers an academic perspective through years of work supporting adult non native language learning and GED classes at Harper College's satellite library. She brings partnerships in the academic community that will offer their expertise in language and GED content, acquisition, assistive technology, and online learning. And I'd like to introduce Chris Double M Z or Chris Meja Mazingwe, and I always butcher his name, so I apologize. You did good. <laughs> He's a frequent speaker on issues of diversity and inclusion. He offers an immigrant experience and speaks five languages. He has years of experience working. Oh, I said, no, with immigrant communities and is also comfortable using advanced technology and developing visual content. 
So good afternoon, everyone. We um, want to welcome you to our presentation. Our team thanks everyone who participated um, in making I Lead You possible for us, because it, it's been a great experience. And it, it has also been a wonderful adventure learning with all of you and um, watching you and your projects grow. And I also want to acknowledge my fabulous teammates and Catherine um, Yanikowski. Did I say your name right, too? Thank you. Who, um, they're really a, a talented um, group of gifted professionals. And um, we made each other laugh, and we really challenged each other um, a lot. But without each other, we couldn't have made this um, project possible. So um, thank you. OK, so our final project was built to address a common community need. Um, which is to support adult non-native language learners, English, um, uh, adult English as a second language learners, and adult GED students as they move from the traditional pen and paper learning environment to an updated computerized learning environment. This is especially important for students who are required to take the newly computerized Illinois High School Equivalency Exam, formerly known as the GED exam. Our team developed online open resource sharing modules that are accessible for special needs students and reproducible by other individuals and institutions. The modules were developed to assist adult learners, again, transition from the traditional learning environments to technology-friendly <clears throat> learning environments. This project addresses multiple learning styles to encourage student retention. The project advances critical thinking and computer literacy skills. And one of our many visions is to improve the skill sets and academic awareness of non-traditional adult learners by encouraging comfortable lifelong learning and career development, advancement and development, whatever. We also used our expertise as librarians to engage the GED stakeholders in a solution-based discussion that helped us build modules the GED stakeholders find useful and want to utilize more of. IGEDU, or IGEDU, IGEDU, was inspired by the expertise of established programs like Project Lead the Way and the Museum of Science and Industries, Chicago's Center for the Advancement of Science Education. We also called on the expertise of leaders in the fields of online learning and assistive technology. So I'm going to turn this back over to Chris, who's going to talk about the community, the collective community that we served. Thank you. So you're not clapping for her. <laughs> she, she did good. She did good. You should clap for her. Now, the, the community we serve, um, I guess I failed to mention that Anna Yakel and I started on this project working for a, a public library and the three other members of the team, whose name escaped me at the moment, <laughs> work for a, a community college library. The Indian Trails Public Library District serves Buffalo Grove, Willing, parts of Prospect Heights, and parts of Arlington Heights. A little sliver of Northbrook. And Harper College, um, in the 90s, purchased an older elementary school that closed and retrofitted into a center where these three lovely librarians worked. That center is geared towards helping that smaller community of Willing and Prospect Heights primarily. A little bit about that population that now lives in that area, about 58% reported in the last census that they speak a language other than English in their homes. And 40% of them reported that they were foreign born. Non-empirical knowledge tells me that census numbers are usually a little bit skewed towards you know, people not reporting everything. So you have an idea of the kind of uh, service area this encompasses. Now, not only is that population diverse in terms of origin, they're also diverse in terms of backgrounds. Uh, when you have most of the language spoken where in order of the last census, 
correct me if I'm wrong, Spanish, Russian, Polish, Korean, a lot of Indo-Pakistani languages that I don't even remember the name, uh, some Serbo-Croatian. And so when you throw that in the mix with the diverse educational backgrounds that come with it, in the big part of this is a mostly rental area, low income, um, trailer park, really, that the city of Willing is trying to get rid of, but we're fighting them on it. Don't tell them I say that. <laughs> Don't record that part. <laughs> but the GED changing is definitely going to have a bigger impact in this community than many of the communities around us. Not only the cost of the exam, which is, you know, again, don't record this part, but we need to think in terms of, last time we did a survey at a library, about 50% of our Hispanic population that we surveyed said they had a smartphone and it was the way they accessed the internet the easy way. What that told me was there's 50% of the one we survey is that do not. Now, how do we get people, and they, this is something else that we need to keep in consideration. Immigrants generally lose out in two ways. If they leave their country before the latest fight hits their country, they didn't learn it. So when they get here, yes, they'll buy a smartphone. But you now have a generation of people using a smartphone we do not know how to type and use a computer. So when it comes time for them to go and take the GED exam, and you tell them, click and drop, they're like, show me how to do it here. <laughs> <laughs> and that often doesn't work. With all these challenges, keeping them all in mind, we had a work cut out for us, and I'm going to let my esteemed colleague, Kathleen Bergen, Come and talk about the meat and bones of our project. You can clap. Thank you, Chris. So we um, had this great idea, and we needed to start moving forward um, implementing it, making it into something practical. So the first thing we did is we went to um, the GD teaching staff at Harper College, and we asked them, what, you know, what do you do? What do you need? What do you see with this population? How can we help? And we talked to one of the science teachers as our first, you know, major contact. And she said the most important thing was getting them hands-on. Because then they were talking, they were bringing up ideas, they were starting to use the vocabulary that they'd read, um, and they were putting pieces together by physically doing something. So we thought, okay, that reading is a goal, that is part of it. That you need to be able to read on a computer screen. You need to interact with the computer because the, both of these things are part of the test now. Um, so those were two things that we thought, well, we're librarians, we teach literacy, uh, information literacy, computer literacy, um, we can help, we can do that. Um, and then the idea that we also wanted to make access to the content part of, part of this and that you're you're working with the content, you're doing more than just um, passively reading um, in order to help cement these ideas into your head um, and connect your reading with something practical. So for our first, we thought we would do one module first as an example and then hopefully get buy-in from other people to help us create more content. So our first idea was a atom, um, part of the science chemistry content. Uh, and just to keep it very focused, um, get the lesson information out, and then to have a manipulative that kind of took the information that's in the periodic table and convey that into what does that mean physically? What does that show? And to go backwards, to say, how does the physical information um, go back into the table? How, how do those two things inform each other? How are these two different ways of accessing the same information? Um, and making that kind of connection so that when they're talking about chemicals later and, you know, um, what is a helium atom, what does that mean? Um, before you start talking about, well, there's two helium and an oxygen and H2O, okay? So building, steps, little steps. 
So we were like, this is our idea. Um, the first thing we did is we created a PowerPoint, which you guys saw as our part of our poster session, that was kind of a way to um, map things out for us. And so I, we took the, the, the content information, parsed it out into reasonable chunks, tried to keep the vocabulary on point, and then it built from each other. Um, and this was our tool that we were going to go to a programmer with to say, help us make this real. Um, but it kind of chucked information out, and it didn't require any special skills. It was just a PowerPoint so that we could map out this idea. Uh, so we went, none of us magically became um, coders. You know, we're not programmers, so we needed help. We knew we needed help to get this done. So we went to the Center for Inv Innovative Instruction at Harper College, which is um, a resource of people at Harper that is designed to help faculty integrate technology into their instruction in a meaningful way. So they were perfect um, advisors for us as we moved our next step forward. Um, none of us had more than basic HTML, so that was a limiting factor that we had. Um, and we thought that was okay, because lots of people don't have more than that. Um, and we still wanted them to be able to add content or help us with the content. So we wanted to, to kind of use that, you know, even though it was a limitation, that's a limitation that's very realistic in, in, in this project. Um, so we were steered by one of these uh, helpful people at the CII to choose Soft Chalk for <laughs> our um, web authoring tool, our classroom uh, learning management system. Um, can go either way. And it was very simple to use. Uh, it has most of the things look kind of like a Word document. And uh, it was very easy. We had some training on it. It, uh, it's fairly common in a lot of educational institutions, though it is subscription-based. So that was part of what our money went towards was getting a subscription for this for, for us to use. Um, but it looks polished. It looks a little better than just something that's free to use. Uh, one of the CII people helped us make a template. So now it's more about putting our content into the template than having to redo it from scratch every time. Um, you can cut and paste from a Word document. So if someone was totally intimidated by this and didn't want to participate in this end of it, they could still present us with content in a Word document, and we can make this happen. Okay. So we thought this was a great start, but we still wanted that interactive feature. The Soft Chalk has some good features, but it, it mostly makes a pretty vanilla web page. Um, there were some quizzing options that were pretty good, but nothing quite like that manipulative that was so exciting and got students talking um, when it was a hands-on thing in, in the classroom. So we wanted to, to kind of still work on that. So I went in and did a little bit extra work with the CII people and had a couple of them consult with me because how to get at it with the resources we had was special. Um, but we managed to come up with um, a little interactive that encourages them to, they have to type in um, a short answer. They have to uh, click on things and interact with them by that, and they had to drag and drop all as part of the activity. Each part is done in steps. They get feedback at each step, uh, reinforcing the important terms or ideas, correcting them uh, if they got it wrong, or, or suggesting first and then, then saying what they got wrong, and then um, if they got it right, reinforcing the right terms, the right terminology. Uh, be sure I'm not missing anything super important. Okay, the program I used was called Articulate, um, and once we kind of played with it, actually I ended up doing all of it. It required no coding, and it's based off of PowerPoint. Um, it's a little more expensive, so we don't have permanent access to it. It was something that um, the, the CII had for us. So that was an excellent way to bring in kind of a higher level of expertise than we could have done just by ourselves, um, and it was a good choice. So now we have a pro, uh, you know, a semi-finished product, um, and we need to get the word out about how this is going to work and how how the, ch the test is changing, how people can help us. And so Annette has been working on kind of helping us with that. So she's going to share with you guys about how we've been getting the word out. <laughs> so... Throughout iLeadU, um, we had some sessions about marketing. So that 
planted a seed in my head. And I'm like, I want to show the community, the library science community, what we're doing. So I applied for ILA, and I applied for Reforma. And then another idea popped up. I want to tell the adult educators. So we applied for the Adult Education Innovations and Opportunities Conference. We were accepted to all three, so that was exciting. Um, <laughs> but at ILA, I experienced something interesting. I'm standing there by, you know, my poster presentation, and um, a librarian comes up and is like, what do you mean it's gonna be on a computer? What do you mean? And I'm like, well, you won't be able to, you can't take it, you know, with paper and you can't fill in the bubbles. You can't take it in paper, pencil form anymore. You can't. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> and we had like a 30 minute conversation and I explained what we were doing. She's like, this is great, this is awesome. As soon as it's ready, you know, we wanna put it on our site. And then 10 minutes later, she tells her friends and another group of librarians come to me and they weren't aware of that. And it kind of hit me, I'm like, oh, wow. I thought everyone, you know, I thought, you know, librarians know everything. You know, I believe that. And that really opened up my mind. I'm like, okay, we need to tell more. So after applying to those three conferences for, for poster presentations, the last two, I redid our entry and said, we're going to do panels, okay? So the Reforma and the adult education is going to be a panel because I think people need to come and they need to learn and be educated about that, okay? It's something that's important. I want to reach outside the library science community. Um, we want to get participants to help our project out, okay? So that was my, my goal, to kind of do something that I'm not comfortable with, which is going out there and then putting our project there, putting our team out there and say, this is what we're doing. This is why it's important, and we're really passionate about it. So, And Anna Yackel is going to talk a little bit about the curriculum of the modules. OK, actually, I'm going to summarize what's already been said and then make a, a plea and then talk about the curriculum. Um, you've already heard Kathy talk about the origins and background of the project. You heard Chris talk about the demographics and the levels of need in our community for what we're producing. You heard Caitlin talk about all of the, as Chris put it, the meat and bones of the project with the content and technology. And you heard Annette talk about uh, how to get the word out and how we have to market this product and make people aware of generally the situation that's going on with the GED and how it's going to be a barrier for a lot of people in completing this. So I want to tell all of you how much I, I have appreciated this experience here and how much I appreciate each and every one of you and your minds, your innovation, your caring about serving people, and that's why I would like to start by inviting you to join us and help us sustain this project. Um, we would really like to encourage anyone who's interested to become involved and help us create more modules. Um, it's really not that difficult to do. Um, if we can do it, you can definitely do it. And we've already created, as you saw, we created the science module for the Atom, and we've created a social studies uh, module for geography. And I'm working on the how-to module on how to create the content or, for this. And um, Harper, Harper College is interested in what we're doing, and they would like us to create more modules um, for all four of the topics that are covered on the test, which is language arts, um, science, social studies, and um, math. Oh, wonder why I'd forget math. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's come to pass, you know, we all know this is true. We all have like ever shrinking time periods where we can really focus on things. So it's important to give people like little bursts of information. So because there's so much to cover for the GED, we really have to break it down into several little bite-sized chunks. And that's what we're hoping we can get some of you to do to help us. And 
after you've decided to move this project forward, because you have as much passion for this as we do, um, I would suggest you talk to your community. Talk to some of your members that come to your library. Talk to some of the, like, you know, your high school districts, your school districts, people, your community colleges, people who are engaged in adult learning, and see where they see the need. And then try to figure out how to match what you can offer to what their need is. And once you've identified the need, I suggest you think about creating a framework. And you should become familiar with a few terms like pedagogy and andragogy and learning management systems, because those are kind of where adult <laughs> education is. It, they're, you know, just Google them. That'll be fine. <laughs> Sorry to all the educators out there going, ooh. <laughs> But it'll give you a background about adult education and what's happening. So, you know, do a little bit of research and talk to people. And we decided to use an instructional design model to help us develop and organize our content. It's called Assure, A-S-S-U-R-E. And it's based on Robert Gagne's nine events of instruction. Google that one, too. <laughs> And A is analyze the, the learners, which means determine learning styles, disabilities, make, try to make what you teach uh, you know, compliant for people who, with disabilities to access online. Um, and also language abilities and reading levels. Okay, then S, of course, state, state, state the standards and objectives of, your, of what you're trying to teach. Uh, we really relied on a lot of the educational standards, like the core standards. Um, we talked to some people at the State Board of Education. We talked to people here at the State Library, Cindy Coletti. You were very helpful if you're here. <laughs> and um, we also talked to other people in higher education. And we relied a lot of on, our, on our Harper partners to help us out as well. And we also uh, investigated technology standards since so much of the test work, you know, is now online and it's like people need the technology standards to also be prepared for jobs. Um, and then you for utilize, utilize all resources and that includes people as well as, you know, manipulatives that you can use um, as well as the technology. And require learner participation. Enable people to become engaged in their own learning process. Um, have interactives. Have like feedback loops where they can go back and review information, key bits of information. And then finally, E for evaluate. And that's something where you should probably do usability testing, as our good friends at the Chicago Public Library did. That was excellent. Uh, so you do usability testing, tweaks where you find things that need to tweak, and then also think about the lifespan of the information and how often you need to go back and review it. So you have to kind of keep on top of it and, and make sure that what you say is, is accurate and if you have any links that they're kept current. As I mentioned before, um, there are the four broad subject areas and Kathy, Olson Tracy from the, let me put on my glasses here, Center for the Application of Information Technology, who was a speaker yesterday and today, was very helpful with this. And she said besides for those four major subject areas, there's a lot of overlap of some key ideas. And those are um, understanding and interpreting data delivered via graphs, charts, and maps, and understanding the difference between means, median, mode, and range. And so those can actually be worked into, like, you know, you would think most of that would be like math, but you can really work it into any of the other areas as well. And the test evidently does do that. So as I said before, if we can do this, you can do this. And I'd like to, um, encourage you to join us and 
I, I really think that this is where 21st century librarianship is going. I mean, we've always been good at gathering and disseminating information. Now we need to step up to the plate and create content that's relative to what people need in their lives. And that this kind of information can really make a difference for people. So I hope you will join us. And one of the mantras for our project Kathy keeps telling us it's only an idea until somebody implements it. So I'm hoping you'll help us implement it. Thank you, and thanks to the State Library, our wonderful mentor, Catherine, and all of you. Thanks. Uh, I, I know everybody is hungry, so there'll be no questions. <laughs> No, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm just kidding. Yes. Do you have a list of topics that you want lessons on? Oh, good one. We do. And we have your email address. <laughs> I, I want to reflect and suggest that you get a hold of whatever the nearest teaching college is yeah. and see yeah. if you can't uh, get students to do that. One. One module per student, it would be excellent um, practice. And you come up with good stuff because their college kids are getting graded on it. <laughs> I think that's an excellent idea. And honestly, um, just about any topic that you can think of from high school could be useful. You know, like all of the math could be useful. You know, I know especially, like we said, meaning, meaning and mode and reading and interpreting, anything that can be incorporated with that, very useful. You know, that can be overlapped with science, with social studies. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's a great suggestion, and I think we should definitely look into it. Um, but if anyone in here is like, oh, I think I really feel strongly about a topic, then, um, like I said, you don't even have to, to worry about putting it into a web format. We're happy to do that, um, but we're not content area experts, so uh, that's kind of where we're hoping to get some partnerships. Yes, ma'am. How are you recruiting the foreign language authors. I, I, I was so moved, Chris, by your description of the challenge with all the foreign language speakers in your communities. How, how are you addressing that? In several steps. Uh, one of the things that we've learned, and I learned this as an ESL student myself, even if somebody finished high school in their home country, the only thing they're going to be tested on in order to figure out what level they're going into is their reading level. So if you don't read English at a 12th grade level, it doesn't matter what you did before. You could be a really good at math. Actually, funny story in college, not to distract from your question, was that I was able to take math classes before my counselor actually allowed me to take a philosophy class because I could deal with the formulas, I can do everything else. The way, um, it's, it, and it's doubly difficult because it's intimidating to come to a situation where you admit that I can't do this. And don't record this, <laughs> sometimes going through the GED is not the best way for everybody. The Mexican consulate in Chicago started a program a couple of years ago where it allows its, the citizens of that country to finish their secundaria, which is high school education, online from the original country. 